Let us now move on to the second presentation. The second presentation will be on integrating ICH in education for the promotion of cultural diversity. Ms. Jeong Bing Han, Program Specialist and Chief of Culture Unit at UNESCO Bangkok Office, will be giving her presentation. Hello. Hello. Thank Hello. you very much for your introduction. Uh, let me just quickly share my slide. Um, okay, is is that still? Oh, it's still. Um, is is that the right version? Could you see? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes, yeah. we can thank see the presentation well. Thank you. Uh, in in the full form, right? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much to uh, our colleagues at ICAP and uh, Jeonju National University of Education for inviting me to uh, to speak at the uh, session today. Uh, but first and foremost, before I begin, and I would like to send my warmest congratulations to. Uh, my Korean colleagues and friends and on the Korean audience for the inscription of uh, Yoon Dang Hae, I apologize, I probably don't pronounce it rightly, Lantern Lighting Festival in the Republic of Korea in the representative list of the intangible country heritage of the humanity. It just happened last night, uh, our Asian time, and, uh, and I'm sure that everyone is very happy about that, and I'm very happy with you as well. Congratulations. Um, so uh, following the presentation of Professor Han that gives the conceptual framework and the conceptual thinking about the teaching of cultural diversity, uh, in my presentation, I'm going to, uh, to be a little more uh, practical uh, and with uh, uh, also to promote for this approach of integrating intangible and cultural heritage in education. Uh, it's not a subject about cultural diversity. It's not really uh, yeah, the, the, um, the primary focus of that, but then eventually uh, using this approach could really also uh, help on the uh, students to learn about themselves, to learn about other people Arounding them, uh, including those from different cultures, different ethnic groups, uh, which would hopefully also contribute to flourishing of the country and diversity. So intangible cultural heritage, uh, just a very quick recap uh, in case that we have some of the audience here who are not coming from the uh, cultural sector and not familiar with UNESCO uh, approach. Uh, so intangible cultural heritage, we can also refer to it as a living heritage or often abbreviated as ICH. Uh, our practices, representations, expressions, knowledge and skills uh, and associated instruments, objects, artifacts, cultural spaces that are identified by communities as part of their cultural heritage is being transmitted from generation to generation and it provides the communities with a sense of identity and continuity. And this is the definition that came out from the 2003 Convention for the Safeguarding of the Intangible Country Heritage, which governs all our work in relation to the ICH uh, topics. Uh, ICH and education have the quite uh, a strong uh, relevance, a strong linkage as also defined by the 2003 convention. In the convention, uh, one of the, the biggest objective of the convention is to safeguard the uh, intangible country heritage to ensure the viability of the ICH in the world. And how we do that, we do it through transmission, uh, uh, among other things. Uh, transmission, particularly through formal and non-formal education. So uh, the relationship between ICH and education are very well acknowledged uh, since the very beginning day of the convention. So integrating ICH in education, what, what, what does it really mean? Uh, we have a couple of different ways to do it. 
So normally when you bring ICH in edu education, you can have an option to teach about ICH. So ICH is a subject of the instruction. So in this, you learn particularly about the origin, about the meaning of ICH. You learn about the practice of ICH. Uh, so, for example, I, I'm giving a, a couple of examples. On the examples and on the information I have here came from uh, the previous uh, projects that UNESCO Bangkok has been doing and also a recent survey that uh, UNESCO Bangkok together with HCAP conducted in Asia Pacific in 2019. Uh, so one of the example is, for example, the music education that takes place in Uzbekistan. Uh, on one of the folk song that of, of, of the of the country. So in the lecture, uh, students would learn about the understanding uh, of the meaning of the lyrics. Uh, they learn about the awareness of the zodiac year concept and associate ritual that uh, make a reference to the song or where the song plays a significant role. And then the group practice learn singing the song and could be performing the songs. And so in that sense, uh, you, you would, we would be uh, actually practicing the, the ICH. Or another example, maybe not so direct to teach about, but then the physical education students also practice different traditional folk games. Uh, so on the one hand, it improves their dexterity and develop a sense of teamwork. But then also they learn about the games that play by their parents, their grandparents, they learn, uh, they, they, they have a sense of the community belonging. Uh, another example came out from, from our recent survey is uh, in one of the school in Mongolia and a different type of crafts or different type of folk dance are being taught in school, especially they also learn about the different arts and customs of different ethnic groups of the regions and beyond. So in that sense, uh, they not only develop different skills, different uh, knowledge related to the education subject, but they also learn about other, other uh, culture, other ethnic groups. The second approach in uh, using ICH in education is teaching with intangible cultural heritage. And in this sense, the ICH becomes a pedagogic tool. Uh, so you ICH can be used to uh, offer learning opportunities uh, to enrich the teaching and learning process. Uh, it can apply to all curriculum and subject. Uh, and then often in this sense, you can also learn about heritage at the same time, of, of course, at the minor, uh, lesser extents than when you teach about ICH. So for example, uh, you might have seen this example before, it's one of my favorite example, uh, is you learn math, uh, you learn geometry with tribal embroidery. So uh, you, you learn about different basic geometrical shapes, uh, uh, you improve your vocabulary, uh, and then at the same time, you learn about this actual uh, practice that uh, the embroidery that your probably mothers and grandmothers do at home. And then that would hopefully also create your curiosity. And then you also want to learn how to practice the skill yourself. Or in, uh, in uh, Palau, one of the very small uh, country in the Pacific where the traditional are embedded in many, many uh, subjects in school. So they would ex uh, transpose the tradition to no notion of respect toward community members to learn to respect and security uh, of, uh, on the road. So this is the, some of the, the uh, graphs that came out from your, our survey recently. So you can see that you uh, the, the teachers, uh, the survey uh, received the responses from 777 teachers and educators across the countries in Asia and the Pacific. And then you can see that they have many ways to teach ICH in school. Uh, they can teach during a, les a lesson designated to a uh, country and ICH. Uh, they can teach about the in, in lessons of, uh, of the local co culture, local content. Uh, they can teach, they be taught in lessons of other subjects. They can be taught in uh, extracurriculum activities. Uh, and then when you look at the graph on the right and you will see many subjects that 
uh, ICH is being taught in arts, languages, mathematics, mu music, religion, sciences, social studies, uh, sports. And so some of the uh, subjects that you don't often even consider that you could teach um, ICH. And then uh, in terms of extracurricular activities, and you could uh, have it in school clubs, you have school projects, uh, specialized in schools, uh, specialized in the community. So there are many, many different ways that you can really bring ICH into school to, to improve the, the, uh, the learning outcomes as well as to contribute to safeguarding intangible and cultural heritage. So there are a couple of other examples that came out from, from the survey, like in Nepal, uh, the school uh, in the uh, implementing extracurricular program uh, also designed and based on students' living heritage. Uh, so students on every Friday, they learn uh, songs and dances, especially those from other ethnic groups as well. So these kinds of methodology are also especially useful when you teach in the context where there are many different ethnic groups, many people coming from different culture, coming to the same to the same school, because that would also really encourage the mutual understanding. Or in the Philippines, uh, the school organizes the music, art, physical education, and health festival. And so this is also uh, an extracurricular activity. Uh, they would um, uh, prepare dance choreography uh, based on the students' traditional dances, and they, they take the classes, they take the, the lessons with other classmates. And so uh, it, the activity also encourages the students to share their own heritage with their peers. Uh, and, and also to learn about their peers. So why is it important to integrate ICH in schools? So uh, with this, in a nutshell, uh, we hope to introduce new ways to teach and raise awareness about sustainability rooted in community knowledge. And through this process, we hope that we could re receive a dual goal uh, to uh, safeguard intangible and cultural heritage and uh, to uh, improve the quality of education and relevance to, to learners uh, so that uh, to motivate the students and to make them learn better. So uh, this is coming out from our survey again. You can see that most of the students, uh, most of the teachers who participate in the survey consider using living heritage for teaching is beneficial either for teachers, for students, or for safeguarding living heritage. So uh, first of all, it, how, it does, uh, how it supports quality education. Uh, teaching with ICH really supports the acquisition of the 21st century skills and improve the students' learning. Because ICH is everywhere around us. The students can really have to connect to it. They are familiar with it. But then, and then it helps you, it helps the teachers to connect theory with real, real, right, real life. And it helps the students to uh, learning to become contextualized and engaging. It's more fun, it's more practical. And then the teaching with ICH often involves active pedagogies and therefore is also promote problem center learning, student center learning, which is something that our education sector is, uh, is encouraging. Uh, it also encourages multidisciplinary uh, approaches and cooperation among teachers. Most ICH elements can relate to many school subjects and the teachers are encouraged to collaborate with each other to allow students to learn about an element from different perspective. Teaching with living heritage challenges teachers to develop new innovative approaches, which may require them to diversify their teaching methods and tools and work more closely together. And uh, also through teaching with ICH and teachers would enhance their creativity um, they, uh, they, 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 they have to find multiple sources of inspiration, information, and so they can also become more resource, resourceful, um, and that would be useful for teacher. And teaching with ICH also helps young people to explore their identity, because living heritage really shapes who we are, what we value, how we see and act in the world, and therefore, integrating heritage in education also connects students to their past, to each other, and to the wider world. Uh, a lot of that very related to the GCED principles as well. 
Uh, it can uh, strengthen students' sense of identity and belonging. And having a sense of belonging and acceptance at an early age is very important to build self-esteem and to understand the self and one's place in the society and for building uh, a peaceful world. And then learning with ICH also boosts students' confidence. Uh, they can uh, share their own knowledge and experience with their classmates. Uh, and so they also help them to work in group and later love help them to be uh, become a practitioner. And then also communities are the bearers of knowledge about nature and the universe and are the essential actors in protecting and sustaining their environment. So we, through learning with ICH and the students can learn to explore local sustainable approaches to manage control natural resources. Uh, and so that would be also helpful to build a sustainable future for all. And then intergeneration uh, communication uh, is not only the key for transmission of living heritage, but also crucial for well-being of their own community. So teaching with ICH also bring uh, the young students to be closer to their older generation because that uh, bringing the communities into school is really one of the key elements of this approach. Um, and, and so that, that would enhance is the intergeneration um, uh, uh, connection. Uh, and then um, one of the, the big, uh, the other uh, important aspect of uh, using ICH in education would be contributing to safeguarding uh, ICH. Uh, because once ICH is shown and practiced and used at school, uh, and then the students would be more keen and more curious to, to learn about them uh, and then take on uh, having motivation to, to go back and to, to start um, uh, practicing it themselves. So uh, we, we have uh, done a few different projects. We are now also at the same time uh, at this moment this year and next year we are implementing uh, further to further push for this approach in six countries uh, in uh, Asian Pacific together with HCAP and uh, APSEU. Uh, and uh, we have begun to, to, uh, to get some of the lessons uh, that are coming out of this process. Uh, we have seen that uh, there are testimonies that children enjoy connecting school with their local practices, uh, knowledge uh, systems and environment. Um, the students learn better when they are actively engaged uh, and the knowledge and teaching can also be shared by parents and community members. So that is really to bring the communities and the schools closer together to create an, an, uh, a holistic and enabling environment for students to learn. Um, and then uh, it is student can learn the regular curriculum with, with this approach. Uh, they don't really need to do all these extra uh, classes to, to learn about their heritage because now they spend more time in schools than, than, than at home and in the con community. And they offer new ways to bring different education and culture agenda into practice. Like previously, we, we have uh, our pilot was to connect uh, ICH education and ESD, Education for Sustainable Development. And for this current uh, project, we are uh, exploring the linkage between ICH education and GCED, Global Citizenship Education. And Asia Pacific is the really a very vast region with an incredible diversity, uh, a wealth of ICH expressions, knowledge and skills. So every community has its own ICH. So we really hope that through this process, uh, the different communities in Asia Pacific will learn about more about one another and that would be uh, useful to build a, a peaceful, peaceful world. Uh, and the last thing to note is that this is not a one size fit all approach is why we are creating a, a common framework, but it is really uh, the main purpose is to inspire teachers across the Asia Pacific region to create lessons that are locally relevant and motivate the students. So there's a lot of room uh, to, to, to be creative and to use what the, you, you see in your backyard to, to really bring into the lessons. So that, that is um, the end of my uh, presentation. Uh, thank you again for, for your attention. And uh, uh, if there's any question, I can take it at the, at the panel discussion at the end. Thank you.
ਹੈ